Ableton Live 12 is here, which is great news for music makers around the world. If you're not familiar, it's a great upgrade on the previous version with new instruments, new effects, new quality of life features, lots of new creative tools, which makes your experience really great. Another thing which is really great is the Novation Launch Key, which is a really great companion to Ableton. So in front of me right now is the Novation Launch Key 25. That's because it has 25 keys. Any launch key will work with Ableton Live 12. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna keep things pretty loose. We're just gonna explore some of the things that you can do with Ableton Live 12 and Innovation Launch Key. As I've already mentioned, there's loads of great new tools in Ableton Live 12. There's a few new synths and instruments. But one thing that I generally find is that when I'm playing with a lot of these instruments, I like to have something physical in front of me. And the launch key is a perfect tool for that. So let's just jump straight in. Let's open up the new Granulator 3 instrument, which is a nice update on the previous version. If you've never played with Granulator before, basically it's in the name, it's a granular synth. And what you can do is you can drop samples into it and you can play about with a load of settings and make some really cool sounds with it, which is exactly what we're gonna do. So I've just dropped in this sample of a coffee cup that I've actually used in a different video. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm just going to set the launch key to work with granulator. So the way that I do that is I hold shift and I want to select the device pad. And when I do that, what's gonna happen now is that all of these pots are going to control granulator settings. Now, obviously there are only eight pots on the launch key. So if you want to cycle through different settings, you can hold device select. And as I scroll through here, you actually see on the screen here, it will say granulator three, and then it will say what you're affecting. So I've got all of these different settings. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna start off with the main settings. So what I want to do now is I want to try and find a nice sound that I can use in a musical context just through messing about with these pots. And you'll start to see as I start to play around with these things on the screen on the launch key that all of these different parameters are very handily displayed on the screen. So I'm gonna keep it on classic mode. I'm gonna change the position of where the granulator is taking the sample. And then I can change the scan settings here. So you'll hear, as I start to sort of bring this up, it scans it in a different place. One thing that I'm noticing straight out the gate is that this sample's a little bit quiet and it's not coming through very loud. So I'm gonna increase the volume. We're actually starting to overload a bit there, so I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. I can edit the grain size. Now, of course, I can do all of this on the computer with a keyboard and mouse. But generally speaking, if you're making music and you're in a creative flow and you know, you're doing this five or six times over and you're making different instruments and you really just want to get into making music, what I find is really nice is having a physical way of controlling these parameters and just really being able to feel it rather than see it, I think is quite important sometimes. And the fact that the launch key just has that readily available to you in a really nice and easy way to use, I just think it's great. So I'm just gonna carry on messing about with some settings here and see where we get to. One important thing to note about the granulator synth is that because it is sample based, it's not necessarily gonna be in tune to the note that you're playing on your keyboard. So one thing that I like to do is just have like a C and tune it to that. Now that's not necessarily a perfect C, but it's pretty in tune and I almost kind of want it to be a little bit detuned anyway. So I'm just gonna record like a little idea with this granulator synth now. And now I've got just a nice little melody that I've made on the granulator synth completely using the launch keys pots. I'm gonna do a little bit of that now with Meld as well, which is another new instrument within Ableton Live 12. And then I'm gonna also add some distortion with Raw, which is 
a really, really great distortion effect that's built into Ableton Live 12. And again, I'm just going to control all of that using all of the pots and everything on the Launch Key 25 in front of me. So I've added a meld track. I'm just going to go to that track. And again, device select. Now, because I'm on the meld track, all of the device settings are going to be the meld settings. So again, I'm just going to do the same as what I did with Granulator, find a nice little sound and make something out of it. So I've now got a very basic loop going on, nothing particularly special, but works for the purpose of this video. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add raw to my meld track and just make that sound a little bit more exciting with some really cool distortion. So you can see now raw has this blue hand icon on the plugin, which basically means that is what's being controlled by the launch key. So. I'm realizing very quickly here that the more I mess about with the distortion, the louder it's going to get. So I'm just going to quickly go to volume mode and I'm going to use this pot to turn down track two. Go back to device settings and I can start to kick the drive up again. So that's two new instruments and one new effect completely controlled through the launch key, which is a really nice way of doing things. As I've already said, I tend to find that it's nice to have these effects, but when you're just using a keyboard and mouse, you're not really exploring the sounds as much. Whereas when you have something physical in front of you and you're playing around with it, I just tend to find that I experiment with things a little bit more. I'm tweaking things, I'm listening to it. And I do really feel like having that in front of you, it just makes such a massive difference. So we have this really weird loop in front of us. Let's add some drums, percussion, that sort of thing. So one of the new packs in Ableton Live 12 is called Lost and Found, which if you have the full version of Live 12, then you would have access to that. So let's just open that up as a new instrument. I'm going to go for one of these percussion instruments. Let's try out Bargain Basement. So this pack has got a load of percussive textures which really just add a lot of depth to the music that you're making. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to hit shift again and this time I'm going to set the pad mode to drums. So what this pack is doing, it's not really your standard drum instrument, it's more of these kind of like moving textural sounds. So I'm going to sort of hold these notes and I can change the pitch by using different pads and I'm just going to add that as a texture underneath. And again, all of the recording, everything that I'm doing, I'm not touching my keyboard and mouse at all. I'm just using the transport controls on the launch key. So I'm going to start playing. Okay, that's super weird and I'm sure that if you're watching this, you will probably make something a lot better than what I have made. But the point is, is that I'm able to use all of these settings and all of these controls to create that solely on a keyboard. One thing that I mentioned at the beginning of this video was the fact that Ableton have added in a load of really useful editing tools, a load of really useful shortcuts and things you can do with MIDI editing. Now, I'm not going to go too in depth with that right now, but I did want to show you one thing which I think is really fun. So if I just open up a drum pack, I'm going to use one of the new hip hop drum packs that come with Ableton Live 12. And just for the purpose of this part of the video, I'm not going to use the launch key. I'm just going to quickly write in some MIDI. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a kick here on one and I'm going to put a snare on three. <clears throat> okay, so I now have this kick snare pattern. So if I just stop that for a second, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write in a hi-hat MIDI note, but I'm going to extend it across the entirety of the clip. So the hi-hat is just going to play on the first note. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Option E, and as I hold Option E, this little icon comes up when I mouse over. As I drag my mouse up, you'll see these numbers appear. And what Ableton is doing is it is dividing this hit into equal intervals of 
whatever number you see on the screen. So if I go with five, what's going to happen is it's going to divide this hi-hat hit into five hits across this clip. And this is a really cool and easy way of basically making polyrhythms with not much understanding of how polyrhythms work, which is really cool because I love the way they sound. I'm not so good at figuring out how to do them. I'm actually just going to do it again and I'm going to show you another way that you can do that. This time, instead of holding Option E and using the mouse, you can hold Command E. It's going to automatically break it up. However, if I start hitting the arrow keys, you can see it's doing the same thing again, but going through the different divisions. I'm going to go with three hi-hat hits across this 4-4 four, four loop. So you'll get this kind of like polyrhythm, polymeter thing. The kick and the snare are in 4-4, four, four, but the hi-hat is doing this 3-4 thing, which is really cool. As I say, really nice and easy way to make polyrhythms in Ableton. So where does the launch key come into this? Obviously, this is a new feature, so there aren't necessarily transport controls built into the launch key that help control this. But what we can do is we can utilize the custom modes on the launch key to basically create your own workflow that makes this work. So the way to do that is we're going to open up components. We're going to hit manage launch key, and then I'm going to create a custom mode. So the custom mode that I'm going to make is going to be a pad custom mode. And what I'm going to do at first is I'm just going to select all of these pads, and make them blank. So now I'm going to take pad nine, which is going to be this pad here, and I'm going to make the message type a keystroke. And the keystroke is going to be Apple E. Obviously, if you're on Windows, then you'll use the keystroke that applies to Windows. And I'm going to make it purple. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing again here, make a keystroke, and I'm going to make the keystroke up, green, and I'm going to make the keystroke on the button above it, down. And I'm going to make this Red. Now, I know up and down are the wrong way around. It just makes more sense in the context of what we're doing here to have down at the top, up at the bottom. So now I've made this custom mode. I can save it if I like, and I can keep that on my computer. I'm going to make this MIDI editor. That's saved to my computer, but now I can send that to my launch key. I'm going to send it to custom mode four, overwrite custom mode. And now when I hold shift and I go to custom mode four on the pad mode, those colors that we just made up on components are now here on the keyboard. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Ableton. I'm going to delete these three hits. I'm going to put this back to how it was. And this time, rather than using my mouse and keyboard, I'm going to use my launch key. So I'm going to hold this, which we know is command D. It's done the same thing that it did last time. It's divided it up into all of these notes. And now I can press these buttons and achieve the exact same thing with a custom mode that I've made entirely myself. And again, if I play it, same results. This is something that you have always been able to do on the launch key, but I feel like it's just something that is really worth showing off because as software progresses and as new things get added to Ableton or other DAWs, what you can do with the launch key and the way that you can make your own custom workflows and just figure out new ways of doing things. I just think it's a really, really powerful tool to be able to customize and make your own custom modes. So there you go. There's a nice little MIDI editing workflow that we can use with Live 12. The last thing that I want to highlight in Ableton Live 12 that I find really fun to use is the tuning systems. Now, if you are somewhat familiar with music theory, then you'll know that generally speaking, most Western music uses the 12 tech tuning system, which is simply put, it's basically one octave on a piano. So that's 12 notes, that's 12 tech. Let's resolve it with the octave. So that is your standard tuning system. But Ableton now makes it very easy to change the tuning system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select tunings on the screen here in the little browser menu. And I'm currently on 12 tet. I'm going to select 24 Helmholtz temperament.
Now, I have no idea what 24 Helmholtz temperament is. I am not a genius when it comes to micro tuning, but the interesting thing about this one and why I've chosen it, it is double the amount of notes in 12 tet. And if I play it, it takes twice as many notes to get from one C to the one above it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly open up the clip mode. I'm just gonna make it my full window. I just wanna show you something that's really interesting here. It's gonna take a long time if you want to play things in micro tunings. It's gonna take you a really long time to unlearn how to play a standard piano chord and relearn it in this 24 note tuning system. And I don't expect many people are gonna do it, but the notes are transposed onto the launch key if you want to try. But I just wanna show you something that I found really interesting. So if I play this C key, you can see on the screen that this is C2. If I play this C key, you can see that is C3. Now what I wanna do is I want to play a C major chord. So this is gonna take a little bit of working out. I wanna find an E, which is this key. C, E. And that's a C major chord. Now it's a bit weird because I'm playing a C, an A and a D on the keyboard, but within the software, this is a C, an E and a G. If you want to put the time in, as I say, and learn how to play some of these chords on the keyboard, then you might be able to create some really interesting, almost unheard music, especially when it comes to the context of Western pop music. And that is a very loose view of Ableton Live 12 working alongside the Novation Launch Key 25. I hope that seeing the practical things that you can do with this keyboard and Ableton really opens up some ideas and inspires you to make some really cool creative decisions that you maybe wouldn't have done without these two things in tandem. If you are not an Ableton user, then the Novation Launch Key does come bundled with Ableton Live Lite, which is a slightly stripped back version of Ableton Live, but that is completely free with whichever launch key you get, whether that be the Mini or the 88 or any of the different models in between, you will get Ableton Live Lite with it. Thank you so much for watching. Please do let us know in the comments if you found this video useful, if you've found out about any other things that you can do with the launch key and Ableton Live 12, let us know. We love to hear from you and we love to see new tips of how we can use the launch key with Ableton. I've been Vinny from Novation. See you soon. It's the most ridiculous beat ever. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs>